Hi, I'm Kevin from Hutton Engineering Services. Today you're joining us for episode two of the stripping and dismantling of the AM V8 540 engine. If you haven't watched the initial video, um, it should be on our it will be on our channel that you can you can go back to and and, and view should you wish so um, that was just an explanation of what we're going to do to the engine um, where we're at now is the engine's been completely dismantled we've carried out an inspection and a preliminary clean and what we're going to do is just talk you through some of the things that we found some of the issues we found and um, what we're going to do um, in respect of the, the, the project and, um, and, the, and the machining as, as a whole. So um, one of the um, things that we're looking at now is the issues that we've found with the cylinder heads. Um, strangely, when we took the cam covers off um, and we're looking at removing the heads, we noticed that a couple of the head studs on one of the banks had actually snapped um, as you can see they were quite a quite a quite a large stud um, and what we were what we witnessed is the proportion of the thread um, where the nut um, was 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 on the on the stud and had actually completely sheared um, one of which i have in my in my hand here so that's the nut is still completely free on that portion of the thread and it is it has actually just literally sheared um, while uh, while in operation um, whilst under tension which is which is quite unusual uh, and it was actually um, it was actually just floating floating round inside the inside the cavity of the of the cylinder head um, other than that um, the, the cylinder heads are in very good order one of them uh, you could see where the the gasket had been blowing here um, and it, had, it actually caused some build-up of um, sediment around the, around the head stud which made it quite difficult to, to lift, lift the cylinder head off which is not something that you usually see on the V8s, you see it on the six cylinders but the V8s, um, there's usually a lot of oil around there and the, and the cylinder heads just easily pull up, you can usually just pull them up on your own, this took a, a struggle with myself and Alistair to, to, um, to get that one off which was, which was quite strange. Other than that, the cylinder heads are in pretty good condition. Uh, somebody's tried to extract a, um, the, the, the one-way vacuum valve uh, here and damage the thread, but we can, we'll make an insert and remachine that and uh, make that um, all back to the way it should. Um, all the components um, that have been removed have been inspected. We're going to be replacing the guides um, and the valves and the valve springs is a matter of course but interestingly um, one of the things that we're looking at here is the excessive valve guide wear which is really excessive which is really excessive um, on both the inlet and the exhaust and that's the same on, on both of the heads um, the um, the rest of the cylinder heads look to be in good condition with all the wear parts worn, worn out essentially which will which will change as a uh, matter of course during the, the comprehensive rebuild. One of the things that we, we check for when we're stripping inspecting the cylinder heads that gives us an indication of the overall condition and what work's been carried out previously is actually the the, the, the thickness of the the tappet shim. So on the AMV8 engine, there's a, there's a small shim um, that ranges in sizes um, to set the tappet um, clearance, the cam, the cam clearance. So what we observe is if the shims are very thin, it's an indication that there's been quite a bit of work carried out on the cylinder head in the past. Um, in respect of the, the valves have been reseated, the seats have been recut, and the, the valves are essentially all moving closer and closer to the camshaft. And to compensate for that, people often um, machine the grind the top of the of the stem of the valve off, um, and also change the shim thicknesses as well. So 
we like to have um, uh, we like to have a measure of the shims, and that gives us a an indication of where where we are. On this engine, all the shims were round about 100 thou. Um, these shims range from 90 thou to 110, so it's right in the middle, and I would say they're pretty standard. Um, so valve seat recession hasn't occurred, um, hasn't uh, been prevalent um, on the exhaust or the inlet, and the it looks as if the um, seats and the valve heights uh, are all at standard. So it's a really good starting point um, for the overhaul for the cylinder heads. Um, what we will be doing is we'll be putting larger valves in the inlets, we'll be putting the Vantage size valves in um, and blending those into the ports and we'll, we'll come to that in a, in, in, a, in a later episode. So all in all, um, the cylinder heads are in really good condition. The next um, procedure that we'll go through is we'll, we'll, we'll plate everything up and blank everything off and we'll be um, uh, vapour blasting the the cylinder heads and then we'll, we'll come back to them when we've, um, when, we've, when we've carried out that procedure. So we're now moving on to the bottom end assembly um, which has been completely dismantled. The, the crankshaft is here on the bench um, and the, the rest of the components that we've, we've removed um, as part of the, uh, the assessment. So one of the things that we noted is um, we, the engine was inverted, we removed the sump and we removed the pickup pipe. Um, and while we was carrying out a quick visual inspection of the bottom end, um, the, uh, we, no, we, no, we noticed um, quite strangely on the, one of the main bearing caps, there was, um, the, these have been cleaned. So when there was actually in the engine, there was, um, there was covered in oil and discolored. So we noted a, a very shiny, a shiny patch on one of the, on one of the um, main main bearings, and when we rotated the, the crankshaft, um, it became um, evident that what's caused that is actually the the bungs from the the crankshaft um, big ends, um, which have, have come loose and that they're coming out of the crank. One here um, that had come loose had extracted itself. Um, and came out and if you look closely here you can see a, a chamfer actually on the bung where it's been rubbing against a cap and the, the rear um, the rear big end bung has come out even further so incredibly lucky so what would have happened is if that bung would have come out or those bungs would have come out the, the oil pressure would have been lost and um, the bearings and the engine would have been uh, starved with, from oil um, quite quickly and that could have caused significant damage to the crankshaft. Um, the, the rotating assembly as a, ha a whole, um, uh, we wouldn't like to know um, exactly what, what could have occurred in that situation, we've been extremely lucky. So what we're dealing with is pretty much like the cylinder heads is these issues would all, are all going to be resolved as part of the comprehensive rebuild, along with the, the main bearings which are, which are worn, uh, worn down to the copper. Um, the bearings on the crankshaft surfaces, they're worn also, but we'll be regrinding the crankshaft to the next undersize as part of the standard, um, standard rebuild anyway. So everything um, that we're looking at is going to be all the issues that we've seen are going to be completely rectified as part of a, uh, the standard um, rebuild um, that, we'll be, that we'll be carrying out. The rest of the components look to be in, again, worn out but um, decent condition. No, nothing catastrophic, um, which, is, which is always the way we like to, um, we like to work. Um, so if you look closely here, you can see um, the, 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 the bung is almost completely out. There's probably only about three or four threads left in there. So that was just about to pop out. So really lucky, really lucky. Okay, so we're moving on to the cylinder block now. As you can, as you can see, the, the cylinder liners have been extracted. The cylinder head studs have been removed. And we're going to talk through some of the things that we found. Um, so where we are currently is um, everything's been removed from the block. It is now a bare block and it's ready for cleaning um, through to the next next process. We'll move it from the stand um, and we'll, 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 we'll give it a, a thorough 
clean um, and then we'll look at the surface preparation to bring it back to a to a to a to a nice to a nice standard um, so the as we noted in the um, earlier part of the video some of the cylinder head studs um, had actually snapped um, they they came out of the block okay but a lot of the other studs were seized solid um, which sometimes you can give them a good crack we double nut them um, and give them a crack off and they usually come out okay because they are the cavity the studs are quite de deep down and they're usually surrounded in oil so you, you you don't get any sort of galvanic corrosion in there or any um any uh, any seizure as as such but in this case on um where the head gasket had, um started to go or where it blown you could see um that, that these coolant actually gone down into the um head stud holes and that had, uh, that had caused the studs to seize in place but anyway we, were, we, we managed to get them all out after um, after some uh, after some time and, and some and, and some patience without without any damage and the same with the liners really um, the, the liners are for those not familiar with with this engine the liners are what's called a top hung liner so the liner actually essentially holds um, hangs on a spigot at the top with rubber o-rings at the at the bottom and they usually um, should be quite easy to to extract because there's no real interference fit on the liner itself to, to clamp it in place um, but what happens over a period of time the the cylinder block um, it starts um, starts filling with deposits and these deposits can be extremely detrimental to the to the cylinder block as well and the deposits can be um, uh, very heavy and they gather up against the back of the cylinder liners and then with galvanic corrosion and, and, and acidity um, the, the the material of the cylinder block gradually gets eaten aw eaten away um, and at the bottom of the liner locations where the, the o-ring seals are um, it can get really really pretty grotty down there and if you don't catch this in time what happens is that the, the shelf at the bottom where the where the um, sediment starts to rest it really starts to eat away at the the, the, the cylinder block the parent material and what happens is this it, over time it gets worse and worse and worse and it starts going into the where, where the liner seals are, are needed to to um, to, um, pro, to provide the seal between the liner and the block. So, um, what what happens is the as the block heats up, the aluminium expands greater than the, the cast iron, and where the liner O-rings are at the bottom, um, they they take up that, that movement and they stop the coolant passing through in, into the oil. But what happens over time is when the corrosion and the debris builds up around these areas, the, the block's expanding. And as it's expanding, this, this debris is in the form of very small particles and it drops down between the liner and the block and it keeps some force in the liner that the block out further and that it squashes the liner in and it builds up a, a path for where the coolant can gradually find its way um, to um, pass the seal as well and and, the, the, and it actually ends up coming out of the the, the, the what they call the, the liner weep holes which I'll, I'll show you in a second so with with this block um, what we found is that a very heavy, very heavy build-up of sediment um, in both banks and it was extremely, extremely heavy um, to the extent where some of the liner um, cavities, the water cavities, which should be clear to provide the, 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 the cooling uh, that is critical, was actually blocked solid, um, which we've we've just scraped out and we've vacuumed out and we've had a needle gun in there as well just to try and get the, the heavy deposits out so when we're looking into into the cylinder block um, around the bottom the the areas that usually corrode our our, our first first pot port of call for a closer inspection and, and on this occasion we can see 
The, the, the corrosion has started, um, and it has started to get a hold in certain areas of the block, but it, again, just like the crankshaft, it's been caught just at the right time. So the areas that have suffered with the corrosion are not critical. So after remachining of the top decks of the block and the liner heights, we can clean up the bottom as well. And that will take everything back to standard. And the, the corrosion that has started, we can, we can, use, we can use a process um, to cover those areas um, so it doesn't, doesn't cause any, any future, future issues. And we'll, we can halt the process of the corrosion um, in those particular areas so it doesn't doesn't extend further and become an issue in the future um, so that's all in all pretty good um, again what we've done is it's been caught just in the nick of time so there's no major repairs required down the, the bottom of the liner locations and apart from looking very grotty at the moment um, it's something that we're not, we're not concerned about. The front timing cover um, was quite difficult to remove. What, what happens with the, with the timing covers is three areas where the coolant passages go through the cover. They can gradually sort of weep over the time and it just sort of extends to the, um, the stud holes. And what happens is just like the liner seizing in place, the stud seizing in place, and you, you find it very difficult to, um, to, to pull the timing cover off because the, um, the, 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 the space between the stud and the aluminium, uh, along with some galvanic corrosion, is taken up by um, debris and it's very dry in there. And that build up of sediment and debris sort of inside those cavities means you can't pull the timing cover off. And what, what, what I've seen in the past is people try and chisel them off and get under them, which is, which is not great. So we just go through and we, we drill the studs, drill the studs out, um, enables us to take the timing cover off without any damage. And then we'll just remove the rest of the stud um, as, as needed. So all pretty straightforward. And what we'll do now is we'll move along to the next process which is the um, surface preparation and getting the block clean before we carry out the, the other um, checks that we need to do before starting the, the machining process. Um, when we've been through the cleaning and the inspection process, um, we check the main bearing tunnel to make sure everything's okay size-wise. The rear crankshaft seal. The rear crankshaft seal on these is a mechanical seal, um, just like the uh, DB5s and DB6s. Um, but we, you can't replace them in their entirety. So with a DB5 or 6 engine, a six cylinder engine, the, the rear crankshaft seal is in two halves. Uh, so what we do is we pull them off and we fit new ones with an undersized centre. Then we line bore um, so we can optimise the, um, the, the seal clearance at the rear to stop to stop any leaks with the v8s only one half can be removed the other half of the seal is part of the block and it's lime board in situ so we usually have a measure and see um, see where we're at with that if the crankshaft hasn't eaten away of the seals it's ordinarily okay just to, um, to to leave those as standard should they be within the tolerance that we've learned is 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 acceptable over over the years so for the next processes um, i do hope you'll join us and you'll continue to follow the um, the rebuilding the modifications and the upgrades that we'll be carrying out on this um, AM540 V8 engine.